Hello, my name is Justin Clark and I work with Adolescent Health Working Group, a nonprofit organization based in San Francisco, California. We are a coalition of youth, caregivers, and adolescent providers in the public and private sectors, and we seek to increase the capacity of service providers to better support youth ages 12 to 24 by offering providers training opportunities, innovative resources, and direct community engagement. This interview series is to help inform folks on the variety of ways that um, nonprofits and public agencies and individuals help support the health and safety of young people. As an organization dedicated to bringing folks together, Adolescent Health Working Group um, uses this series to sort of just help elevate and share the voices of experts and leaders, parents, and young people. We are so excited to be joined by Marsha Izumi. Uh, Marsha is an educator, national speaker, and advocate for the LGBTQI plus community. And Marsha serves on the PFLAG National Board of Directors and is a co-founder of the first PFLAG chapter created specifically for Asian Pacific Islander families. She is also the author of Two Spirits, One Heart, which is a heartfelt and candid book that chronicles Marsha and her son's personal journey. Marsha, thank you so much uh, for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Justin. I'm very excited to be here. Great. So um, I guess the kind of best place to start um, is if you could just kind of share a bit uh, about your journey with your son, Aiden. Sure. Um, so I am the mother of a transgender uh, son. Um, Aiden uh, came out first as lesbian, and then five years later, he transitioned to be my son. So um, our journey has been one of ups and downs. Um, it's been one of great education. Um, I don't think I really knew much about the LGBTQIA community at all. Um, you know, just what you hear on the TV, the radio, which wasn't always that positive. So um, for me, it has been really a learning experience. Uh, it has been one where I was, I felt like I was living in this idealistic bubble, uh, which really got burst. And what it did was it just uh, expanded my knowledge and my empathy and uh, just all of my world. So I am so grateful my son had the courage to say this is who I am. That's great. And, and I appreciate you sharing that and uh, any times in which folks can expand their knowledge and empathy. That's such kind of a wonderful, um, it can be a wonderful experience. Um, you talked about um, some of the ups and downs and in um, kind of previous conversations we've had, I know you've talked about um, the, some of the challenges of trying to overcome some of the negative things that have come up. and. I was wondering if you um, could chat a little bit about that um, and how you were able to sort of overcome those things. Sure. Um, I think my feelings as a mother fell into three categories. I, I went into a lot of shame, not shame for my son, but shame for myself as a mother who wasn't there for my son when he needed me. Um, who didn't understand what he was going through. Um, and so I, I felt like I always wanted to be a good mother. Aiden is adopted from Japan. And when he was placed in my arms, I just said, the thing I want to be is a good mother. And during many of those moments, I felt like I was a terrible mother. Um, I also grieved a lot because I had this beautiful daughter that I love. And all of a sudden, now I had to adjust myself to having not a daughter and a son, because Aiden has a younger brother, but two sons. And uh, so I think I did grieve for the loss of that, uh, of that daughter. Uh, but um, I think my greatest negative feeling was fear. I didn't think this world is very kind to marginalize in people that are different. You know, we're already Asian. So we're were, you know, different. And then now I have a child that's LGBTQ and also adopted. So there was a lot of intersections where I feared that Aiden uh, could be ridiculed, could be targeted. But Justin, in the long run, I think um, 
it just took me time. It took me education and support. Uh, and today I have to tell you, our family lives in pride. Uh, we live in joy and gratitude, but most of all, we live in hope. That's wonderful. Um, so you have been very active in working with the Asian Pacific Islander community. Um, and you've, um, in some of the things that you've written, you've kind of talked about um, how being Asian kind of has affected this, uh, your journey for your family. Um, can you share um, a bit more about that and sort of the, your work uh, within the API community? Sure. Um, I think that I didn't really understand how much my culture was going to affect this journey. Um, I think in the very beginning, I went into a lot of shame because in the Asian culture, um, saving face and honor and all of that, you know, respect for your elders, all became part of my journey. Um, so I struggled in the beginning thinking not only was, a bad, was I a bad mother, but I was affecting my family in a negative way. Um, but really, I think through my processing, I feel like I honor my family best by standing up for my son and loving him. Um, the other thing is Asian families, it is, you know, uh, the American culture is really uh, individualistic. It's like, you know, go out and do your thing and, you know, do your best and you can be any, but anybody. But in the Asian culture, it's very family oriented. So, you know, what you do does affect your family. And so, uh, you know, you're carrying that piece, that Asian piece with you. Um, we are also very private. Um, Asian families feel like you don't share negative things with the world. So I had to kind of break through many of those Asian stigmas to get to the place I, I'm in today, like uh, go seeking mental health, uh, like therapists to support our family and especially to support Aiden. Uh, I was not grown up thinking that was really a great thing, you know, to do. It's like you're not strong enough to handle things. So um, I, I think those were some of the negative, but I think the positive things is I was really taught um, that you persevere through difficulties. There's a word in Japanese that says gaman. Um, and I was also taught that um, you don't really dwell on things and, you know, let it hold you back from moving forward in the present and the future. So those are positive things that really helped me and that were part of my culture as well. That is, thank you for sharing that. Um, kind of when you were in tonight, you mentioned um, that, you know, there are some of the things in your life that you kind of carry with you um, and how that affects your family. And I know from some of the things that um, I kind of read that, um, that you wrote, you've also written about your faith. And so I'm, I'm curious, how has religion affected this journey for you and your family? I think once again, there's, it's like there's negative parts and there's positive parts. Um, and, um, Aiden was asked to leave the church that we were going to um, until he found himself, which meant that he wasn't, uh, you know, LGBT. And so that was really a difficult message because I think at that point, my son felt he was not worthy of God's love. And he really loved the church and he loved God. And so at a time when he was being uh, really bullied and harassed in school and he needed a community to say, we stand by you, uh, he didn't have that. So um, Aiden will not go back to church at this point. And I don't, um, you know, I don't fault him because I, I don't think all churches are that safe of a place from messaging for my son to hear. Uh, but on the positive side, Aiden and I are doing uh, some work in the faith community. And we're seeing some very wonderful people that want to do this work and want to raise awareness and want to support 
the LGBTQIA community. So um, I tend to focus not so much on the hurt that we experienced before, because once we go into the church, there's so much healing. Um, and so I'm just grateful for all those ministers and leaders in the Buddhist and the Christian community uh, that are speaking up and trying to educate their congregations. So um, over the course of the questions um, that I've asked, I've mentioned a couple times that I've read stuff that you have written. Um, and uh, as I kind of mentioned in the introduction, you wrote um, a memoir, which was beautiful and powerful and kind of shared your family's experience. Um, could you share a bit about, um, kind of more about Two Spirits, One Heart and what the process was like for you to, um, you know, write that and kind of share that in that way? Sure. Um, actually, uh, my background is education and I work in, a char in the charter school, um, working with at-risk youth that have dropped out of school. That was before I retired in 2011. So um, I was writing a book about the founder and I, I wanted people to know more about charter schools, but somewhere the person that was like supporting me for editing, because I was a brand new writer, said to me, Marsha, you know your story about your son and how you got to be an activist. That's the story I think readers would be interested in. So I thought, oh, that's great. You know, I would love to share that. I, I thought it would be really easy and something that would be helpful for our community. Um, and it was easy. I was able in like an hour and a half to outline my whole book. But then when I started writing it and having to go through some of the painful things, that became a much harder process. And I had to really look within myself to say, what kind of book is this going to be? I know, um, uh, like for me, I, I have heard it's raw, it's emotional, it's vulnerable. And I decided that was the kind of book I was going to write. Because if I wrote this fluffy, look at where we are now today, you know, that wasn't going to help anybody. I wanted people to know some of the shame and the sadness and fear I went through. So anyway, I think the process was amazing. Um, Aiden and I, I, I wrote it from a mother's perspective, but of course it's Aiden is so much part of it. So he was part of the, the, the information. And it was a very healing process, I think, for both of us. So as, as painful and as hard it was in some moments, um, I think in the end, all the healing and the connection that Ada and I, I made was just worth it. That sounds great. Um, I'm glad that that was able to, that you're able to kind of take the difficulty in that process and find something that was so um, healing and connecting for you both. Um, I'm, I also just sort of want to ask um, if somebody is interested in um, either the book or learning more about your work, um, where should they go? Um, our book is on Amazon. So mm -hmm. you look for Two Spirits, One Heart on Amazon.com. Um, also, I have a website. It's uh, www.marshaizumi.com, and that is M-A-R-S-H-A-A-I-Z-U-M-I.com. And so you can find out more about uh, our work and our family and um, at, our, at our website. Great. And um, for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, we will link to the websites in uh, the description. Um, so you can look for uh, that down there. And then the final question that we have um, is kind of ending on a positive note um, during the difficult time that we're in right now. We're recording this during kind of a um, stressful period of time um, and just wanted to get a sense of if there was anything that you were especially enjoying right now, uh, if it was another book or an activity or um, just something that has lifted your spirits um, during um, these times? Um, uh, well, the book I'm currently reading is Glennon Doyle's Untamed. It's a um, 
it's I think a very popular book right now and and she talks about uh, how as we grow up we become caged and so we lose who we really are and I just resonate with that because I think that I've become more untamed because of this journey and because of uh, you know just my ability to find my passion and to be able to help people and also just because I've been able to find my voice and I really really appreciate Aiden for that um, I use him as my role model um, all that I've learned I think of coming from him the courage to get up every day be himself the courage to ask for support uh, when he needed it um, you know I think there's just so much um, in the book that resonates with me. Um, and I just wanna kind of say, uh, you know, I'm going a little bit off the question, but I just want to say to the parents that are out there that have uh, children that are coming out, you know, please listen to your children, listen to what they're saying, what they're not saying. Please look for support through organizations like, um, like Justin's AWH, uh, G, right? Is that correct? Um, through PFLAG. If you go to pflag.org, there's a lot of resources. Um, and get support yourself as parents. Um, but the main thing is just be patient, be kind, uh, not only to the child, but to yourself, because you are on a journey that might be new. So be kind to yourself. You are learning and love your child. Say it as much as you can. So, um, Anyway, uh, thank you so much, Justin, for those questions. Of course, um, and that is a beautiful way to kind of end it. And uh, I will thank you for joining us today. And I'm grateful for you sharing your voice and for um, just the courage and uh, um, just amazing spirit that Aiden has as well. And that kind of comes through um, uh, both kind of in your writing and just kind of the times in which I've seen the two of you kind of speak together as well. So um, we are so grateful and appreciate your time um, and this opportunity uh, to be inspired by you and your family. Um, and again, if you would like to learn more about Marsha's work, um, please uh, visit her website at marshaizumi.com um, and there's a link to it um, in the YouTube description. Uh, and then if you'd like to more, learn more about Adolescent Health Working Group, you can visit our website at ahwg.org. Um, and we'll also link to that. So thank you for watching. Um, thank you for listening. And wishing you all uh, good health and take care.